the most interesting part of this story and it is not the extremes and the absolute worst violence that, that is experienced by women or the, the worst violations. It's the really subtle stuff that we've just become so used to in, in our society. And those are the scenes in the film that I find really interesting. They're the, the everyday occurrences that happen to young girls, you know, and women um, that we've just become, that we all grew up sort of feeling very um, used to and, and accepting of. Um, and so that's the part of the, it's the ambiguity around all of this stuff that I think Emerald's really looking at in this story. It's obviously there's a very clear right and wrong at the heart of this story and, and that's what her kind of path is trying to sort of right and correct. But there's also throughout, there's these moments of, that are, that you can justifiably have two different perspectives on. And, um, and I think it's those gray areas that we don't talk about that are the areas that are really interesting. I think just she's just got this unbelievable loyalty that, you know, 10 years later, she's not let go of what happened to her friend. And that sisterhood, I just thought was really beautiful and having really close female friends. And I remember Emerald saying to me when we met, you know, what would you, I, I'm, so, I'm sick of sort of machete and lipstick films, girls on revenge paths. Like, what would you actually do if your friend was wronged like that? What, what lengths would you actually go to? for your friend. And I think it was that combination of being a film about women standing up for each other, but also the, yeah, that sort of loyalty, just like standing by someone and, and doing something in their memory, no matter what. Promising Young Woman, well, it's about a 30-something a woman who uh, started her sort of career as a want to be doctor and and had to leave it all and sacrificed it for her friend to protect her friend who had a terrible thing happen to her and you're meeting this character 10 years later and she's still living very much in the center of the trauma of what happened to her but she's trying to find a way through it and her way through it is to sort of one by one um, correct injustices and uh, school men on how to behave appropriately I think she presents herself on a daily basis with she's thought meticulously about what she's wearing and how her hair is and what her makeup looks like and how her nails are and all of that thought has gone in as armour you know that's costume everything that she wears is a costume and we all wear costumes all the time um, but Cassie every day is wearing a costume to sort of protect herself from the outer world and to look as little like she did when this happened as possible. But at night, she uses that same skill to sort of dress herself and change her appearance to sort of mask herself completely and, um, and take on personas. And in those personas, she will make herself vulnerable to men um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and the, these predatory men are ultimately sort of have the tables turned on them. <laughs> She's going out at night, she's pretending to be drunk, she's not drinking at all. She's, um, and she's alone, and she's allowing herself to be rescued by a man. Um, and she waits until, she doesn't ever advance a situation with a man, she doesn't give them any signals that she is trying to end up in any kind of sexual scenario with them. She's blackout drunk, kind of lolling all over the place. Um, and she waits until the moment when the man takes advantage of that and, and then she immediately snaps out of it and reveals that she's sober and um, teaches them a lesson. <laughs> Laverne's just, she, I mean, she's got a very quick sense of humour, um, but she's got such a warm heart and I think, you know, Cassie, particularly in the coffee shop, she's, everything's quite held back and she's sort of staring at the world through her fringe and, um, and she's very standoffish with Ryan when she first meets him. And I think Gail, Gail it brings the sort of joy, you know, I think if she was paired with anyone else at work, she could live a very miserable life, but Gail is joyful and Laverne is joyful. Laverne is so joyful. I mean, she's always singing and, you know, um, sort of larking around and, 
uh, I think that kind of warmth and, and goodness kind of came out in that part. Well, it's been so problematic working with Bo. I honestly haven't, can't remember last time it was a problem laughing at work. You know, I haven't had, I haven't been working on such serious films. I haven't, um, no, he's ruined so many takes by making me laugh. But he's just so quick and he will, he'll never do a scene without just adding one other thing in. And it's usually the thing that like just completely ruins me and then I've gone. Um, but yeah, he's just great. And it, it, and it's hard to imagine anyone apart from Bo playing that part because the film needs that kind of humour at the centre of it. She's just a complete delight all the time. Um, and I remember like a couple of days into filming being like, we should send out a memo to all other directors that you can just be lovely and pregnant, <laughs> but you can just be lovely all the time and get the job done brilliantly. Um, I just haven't seen her lose her rag and she's just lovely and uh, really insightful and smart and direct and she doesn't mess around um, and she can give a like perfect note. Um, as soon as you need it. She doesn't ever t cut the camera until she's happy. Um, yeah, I mean, she's literally, and it, it would never in a million years cross your mind that she hadn't directed 15 other films if you didn't know that this was her first feature because she's just completely at home. I do think we do women, and particularly now even more so, there feels like this real strength of community between women and we do look out for each other even more so now. Um, and I think, so that's what sort of struck me as being most kind of affecting about the film is this idea of us kind of, yeah, looking after each other a bit more. I just hope audiences have a great time. I just think, like, I want audiences to feel the way that I did when I read it. And I got to the end and was sort of gasping for breath, having laughed and cried and been slightly scared. And, you know, I just think, I never want to prescribe things, and I've been part of films before that have sort of tough, you know, tackled tough subject matters, but ultimately you go to see a film to escape and have fun and enjoy, and I just think this is such a, this just has every element of that. It has like a huge romance, and it's funny, and it's a bit scary, and uh, it's dark and wry and, um, and beautiful to look at. I read the script and met Emerald, just a little meeting, and just felt like I really got along with her. And like the script was just super shocking to me, and like actually not what I expected. Even, you know, a lot of scripts when they kind of, maybe movies present themselves as subversive, but actually you kind of know the way in which it's going to be subversive. And this one was really, really surprising. Um, and then I wanted to just meet the person who wrote this. And I sat down with Emerald, and she was sort of not what I expected in the best way. The film is about a young woman who is avenging uh, an injustice that was done to someone close to her on, uh, I think, both sort of practically in terms of the men who actually perpetuated it and also globally in sort of the male culture. It's a, you know, rom-com thriller, I guess. But I'm the, I'm the nice guy that shows up. I'm the good one. I'm the good guy in a world of bad men. Ryan went to school with Cassie. They were both in med school. She dropped out and he continued and he went on to become a pediatric surgeon. Um, and yeah, I think he's a young, successful, confident person who thinks he's a very good person because I think in general he probably is relatively. Um, and I think he goes, you know, he hasn't seen Cassie in a long time and, and sort of runs into her in this coffee shop and is sort of taken aback by her because I think the sort of vibe and feeling she maybe has now is a little dissimilar to what it was when she was in school. Um, and I think he's genuinely pursuing her um, very earnestly and really has strong feelings for her um, and maybe lacks a little bit of self-awareness in retrospect when he looks back because there were a few red flags, but he's sort of blinded by... Uh, just the person she is. Laverne Cox is absolutely incredible and is just like an amazing presence on and off camera. She just like, everyone's spirits are up and like she's like singing between takes and like <laughs> she's like a, like a gorgeous voice. 
I felt totally challenged reading this script. When I first came across the story, I was like, whoa. And other people I know that have read the script are like, everyone has a slightly different reaction. So that's what I think is exciting about Emerald. And this film is that she's not trying to deliver one experience or service a need or service a want that's being expressed by an audience. She's really trying to create, I think, a piece of art that is, you know, open to interpretation and challenges people and, you know, means one thing one day and another thing another day and one thing to one person and one thing to another person and one thing the first time you watch it and another thing, you know, the second time. She's just great. She's just a really good actor in like a very simple, fundamental way where it's just she's like absolutely present and but like lets you into whatever is happening, like is giving in a, you know, I don't know. I mean, she's just a lot better than me. I think she's a lot better actor than me. So it's very really stupid for me to describe uh, in what way she is. It's just, I'm mostly surprised that she's just like very cool and down to earth. It's been incredibly enjoyable. Yeah, it's like great. It's, it's really, really great. Um, there's, there's a million reasons for me to feel uncomfortable and intimidated and, you know, like, why am I here? I shouldn't be here. Uh, and only a few remain because of the onslaught of warmth and kindness from, from Emerald and Carrie. And they're such a great team. And they like each other so much, I think, and get along with each other. Um, it's, just a, it's just a good thing to be a part of. I'm so excited to be a viewer of this film, mostly. Um, I, I just, I think it, I hope it gets people talking in general. I don't know what it, I don't think this, I, I don't think the version of this movie that Emerald wants or, or that I would want to see is a movie where everyone's talking about the same thing. You know, I think it's a, it's a pretty, it's like a sort of a very explosive, contentious in a really great way movie. And it, I think it could hopefully show that, you know, movies can take risks and start conversations still. I hope people are watching and gasping and screaming and booing and hissing and cheering. Because um, I think it, it is also like a genre piece, like a thriller and like is genuinely has twists and turns that you don't see coming. Um, so I hope people are entertained by it. You know, I hope we can kind of show with this film that you can talk about really deep issues and still also engage in the sort of really fun things about movies that like the, the idea of movies that are talking about quote important things and movies that you know make you want to sit down with a tub of popcorn and actually have fun those things are mutually exclusive I wanted to be a player in Emerald's vision I mean that's really what I wanted to do um, and like it's very exciting for a woman to write and direct a piece of art that explores the gray areas and um, complexities of this issue. Like that's interesting to me and very, um, so I'm happy to be a part of it. I mean, I'm an actor, you know, like in this, I'm just meant to service a story. Um, and it's a story that, you know, part of it really resonated with me, which is like who this guy was and the sort of the way in which he flirted. And another part of it was a window into something I am not aware of, which is like, the cross-sectional view of men that women have, that men can have. What are you doing? I said, what are you doing? What are you going to do? It's a day of reckoning for everyone. Promising young girl.